right? Mm -hmm. And what people don't realize is that when you work in the entertainment industry is that when you sign your entry paperwork, you sign an arbitration agreement. Mm -hmm. So and people don't realize that, right? So mm -hmm. so normally you silence, and again, I, I mean, who knew when I made my settlement that Me Too would happen two months later? Yeah. You know, I, if I would have known, it would have been a whole different thing. Um, in what way? Well, it would have because I wouldn't have settled. I would have said, oh, hell okay. no. Right. no, 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 no. I mean, at that point, I just, and again, I, I have to be very careful not to say any details that would let you know who it is. Um, I just, you know, the, essentially what happened was the person did it to me because after I had lost my job because of my stalker, then it was hard for me to get work because everyone sort of knew me as the girl with the stalker. I was very public. I was on the news. And so this person, I think, pegged me as a victim and knew that they could be terrible to me because I really needed that job. So I think they really just smelled victim on which is terrible because I don't see myself the way, but they certainly did because that's what abusers do. They see that's that a good you. point. It's like, it, in many ways, it's like the whole Scarlet Letter era where tainted woman, tainted right. woman. Right, yeah. And and he, you know, there was no dispute about what he did. He did in front of an entire office full of people, so people knew that it was happening, but he just thought he could get away with it because I really needed that job, you know? So there was that. But then, you know, when I had my settlement, and again, I've been very, very especially because it's a lawyer fiance. Right. I'm, sure, I'm sure right now he's like, oh, don't do things. Yeah, you just got um, a text, I think, on Sam. Yeah, probably. Um, but, you know, they, they do a lot of victim blaming, even when the person is a known person having done this. And, you know, it was sort of put out to me. It was like, well, you don't want to go to trial because then you're going to have two trials because I'm not the stalking thing. And you'll be America's biggest victim. You don't want that. So I was like, God damn it, just fine, settle, just whatever. You know, and whatever, got inside, which is great. And, you know, it's a long amount of money for whatever therapy. Who knows, you know, that went quick. But, um, but what I was saying is people don't realize that when you sign the arbitration agreement, you can't really take it to trial anyway, so it's going to be settled this way. So, right. um, but there is this great uh, female attorney that I met through my fiance, who's actually working on a bill in California that would retro retroactively allow you to, if it passes, come out, and then someone like me can say, "This is the man who did this to me," you know. Because right now, that's why there's this culture and this climate of silence in entertainment, you know, because. Well, it's, I mean, it's the, the yeah. silence is breaking. It, the, 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 the Unless you're people like me who sign the ND, I cannot. I know you can't. I know you can't. Leave Even me. Rose McGowan, you know, she uh, she was the hundred thousand dollars had to go back, you know, and he raped her. Right. She had to pay. Like, that's the, those NDs are just. I mean, that's got to go. Yeah. That's just got to go. It's, I mean, because how can we shed light? Yeah. And, until you can kick yeah. over that bushel of silence, exactly. there can be no justice. Yeah, because you, you know we know we're not going to get you know criminal justice, so at least civil justice. But right, exactly, those NDs are really damaging. People don't realize that. Uh, well, I, I think people are starting to realize uh, how really skeevy the entertainment industry is. And I think it's everywhere. I don't. I, I think we're just the most vocal. Think I think is? I think whether I, I don't I don't think exclusive to entertainment. I think yeah. that if you work at a restaurant, I think there's a lot of sexual harassment in restaurant restaurants. I think it's just we have access to media because we're entertainment, and so we're loud. I guess I I, mean, I guess I've been lucky. I've I primarily had women bosses, mm. so I, I I don't think I've seen this. I mean, uh, you know, honestly, uh, up high uh, where I've worked, up high the people that you know they. They come in twice a year. They're the people that are really in charge of men, but you know my direct supervisors have usually been women, and maybe that's why they hire me. I don't know, and I've never, you know, and, and just it, it doesn't even cross my mind. I, I see these things. I'm like, I, I, I can't. It doesn't even cross my mind to do something like that. I wonder if because you're a comedian, you uh, have a certain kind of license to say things that people may assume you're just kidding because no. usually you are. I no, mean, but no, but, but on stage, yes. But in, at, at work, never, never. I know, I know not to go there. I know not to go there. I know, I know not to go there, and I, I just. Uh, yeah, I know so you I'm have to never, be a very respectful man. But um, well, I, 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 but yeah, well, I am. But it's just, and that's just the way I was raised. But I know at work, I and I, I've, I've been at work situations where uh, people I've worked with have been accused of sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I've never, I've never been. I never will because I just know. And I, you know, I joke around, there, you know, but I know where the line is, and I never cross it. You have a, you said something very specific to me some weeks ago about, um, and I think it was a, a, a sexual com commentary kind of thing done by a comedian. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, but you you had a line. You said you don't cross certain things that you wouldn't say, certain words you wouldn't use. Right. No, that, that's just me. Yeah, I, I I don't know specifically the specifics of the. Conversation, but I know well, that. Well, like you, you don't like. The well, 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 
I don't. Well, I I I have said it, but I, I don't. That's not a regular part of my act. Um, uh, the um, the thing is, uh, no. What it is is that uh, almost every comic now coming up has rape jokes. Yes. And my act, yeah. my, I, I talk about myself. Well, it, I, I've never heard a rape well, joke that's like funny. Rape jokes, race jokes. I mean, when did we get to say that it's okay that we incite the idea of rape or racism? Well, it's not even that. I, I, my act, my act is about me. I talk about my life. A lot of people don't. And that's why it's like, oh, I'm edgy. I'm talking about rape. I'm like, you're not. I don't talk about rape in my act because I don't rape. Mm -hmm. I don't think about rape, and I don't want to think about rape, and I don't think that's funny. But uh, here's a here's another uh, horrible segue from me, by the way. Since, well, since it's gotten since pretty serious, that, uh, but, but no, no, I, I want to. I, 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 this I, is a truly feminist show. I understand. So this you, might be the most it. feminist show I've ever, I've ever done. <laughs> I was going to ask, but because we're we're almost out of time. Uh, Lenore, because you all, as I say, you're the arbiter of cool in L.A., and I want to oh, bring, bring back to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You don't think so? No, they're you, sweet. Really I, nice. And you have been for years, so uh, for like at least 10 years that I've known you, oh, and even you. before that. What do you, I mean, how do you stand top of that? Um, well, John Waters always says that he is youth size, and I kind of feel that that's true. Like, I always have, like, because I've been casting for so long, and, like, last year I produced MTV True Life and cast it, I just know all these really young people, and I sort of just, like, what are you guys into? And I, 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 what's weird is that um, millennials, they, they're not that different, you know what I mean? Like, people still just want to go out and have a good time, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Also, like as far as staying up on things, to tell you the truth, I create the things that I want more often than right. not because there's always like a deficit of whatever. So like even like my party I was doing Sunday, I I was like, you know what? I think a lot of people who listen to goth music also really like hip hop, yes. and mm -hmm. and goth clubs are really white, and I don't like that. Like I want to see a mix. Like is what what makes a party great is where you have people who don't know each other to meet each other and date and make friends or whatever. So why not why not introduce two communities and make it all fun and really lighthearted? And plus like a lot of us are over thirty now, forty, you know what? And I want to do a brunch because it's more conducive to talking and like I don't want too loud of music. So right. it's really cute. There's all these tables and people table hop. Like they get their food and then they see oh and then they see cute people and they jump to the next thing. And it's like if you want to dance you can dance. If you want, you know, to get drunk at the bar, get drunk at the bar. If you want to eat a nice meal with your friends, you can do that. Or to sit, or I have vendors and shopping. So it just kind of was like, that's a party I want to throw for me. Exactly. And, 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 I, and I love when, I love yeah. when things mix. I remember one day, one time, they double booked the dungeon with a hip hop club. That's great. It was dude. so great. Cause that's, they, yeah. I, cause, because there were, there were a couple guys that from the hip hop club came down and they were playing Skinny Puppy. And they're like, yo, yeah, this is a, this is a badass cool. beat. And then like yeah. we went upstairs and there were, Got people dancing reggaeton. I love it. Yeah, like Little Kim and Susie do go together. Yeah, it works really <laughs> well, you know, and that's the whole I thing. I see it. You know what I mean? Like, like it's it. all about like we just like the bad bitches. Like it's right. good. Yeah, We're having a good time, good. And, and it's great too because my fiance is a DJ, which he's such a funny character because he's an entertainment lawyer and right. like a really Im impressive one. But he's also a DJ and he's done that for twenty years and he loves to DJ the gay clubs. That's how we met. We're like the two straight people there. So. It's like a nice thing for us to do together, you know. It's really fun, and he's just awesome. Yeah, and a good way for him to blow off steam. Yeah, exactly. That and that, that's another thing I was going to ask you. How come the uh, LGBT community seems a couple steps ahead of us in the trick? Oh, it's in general. Yes, as far as just coolness. They've had to live on the edges. Well, always, yeah. Right? I mean, like, like I, I, I love, like, you know, the John Waters line that the line of a heterosexual is a sick and boring life. I mean, I think it's because if you, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because if you like, if you know that you don't have to live on like the heterosexual life path, you're just free to do whatever you want to do because there's no expectations of you. So you right. can, you know, whatever. And and for me, like that's, like. I, I was, you know, I worked at Frontiers. I was like the one straight girl at the Gay Men's Magazine in my early 20s, and mm -hmm. I've always been just so much more. I don't want to say like I'm a self loathing heterosexual, that's not fair, but like I've always been really embraced by, you know, the LGBT community, and I just have a real affinity. And just, I just think people want to have a good time, and I think especially if you grow up with any level of adversity, which we all have some level of adversity, people don't recognize it, you know, mm -hmm. then you really make the most of your life and you're like, life's already hard, I wanna have a good time. And I really, that's what speaks to me, right. you know, like I, we're just we're just here to have a good time with life's, life's hard, so. Yeah. So you, you, you basically have one step in the future, one step in the past because you've had, you have a lot of famous friends 
uh, of uh, John Waters, I just said, uh, Kim Fowley, who uh, oh, we were yeah, friends with, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Julie Newmar, who yeah, uh, I saw. She's, she's so cool. Uh, she's, yeah, she's, she's beautiful. Here. I saw her a couple yeah. years ago. Oh, my God, she's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and, I saw her Betty Page show. Is that where you saw her? No, no, I saw her at, at, at Comic-Con. 